I was attending Harding University uh, at the time, and I was planning on going on a study abroad uh, trip to Australia. We're going to hit other countries like New Zealand and Thailand and India. Since I live about two hours away um, and I was getting ready to student teach that following semester, I needed to go up to Harding so that I could make sure all the paperwork was squared away, everything was ready so that when I'd come back, I could just go into student teaching without a problem. And so living about two hours away, had to leave pretty early and I was just going to office to office, making sure everything was good, uh, making sure everything was just all working fine and I didn't head home until about four o'clock that afternoon. Um, that Friday, I was going to the Pottsville football game. Um, it was one of the first football games of the year. It was the first one me and my boys were going to. And my son had his friend over and it was, happened to be my boss's son and we were just driving back from Danville from my mom's. And um, driving down 247, um, I can remember we were listening to ACDC, just having a good day. It was about six o'clock when I was hitting that road and if you're driving down that road about six o'clock, the sun is setting just right towards, basically right in front of you. And I, I didn't feel sleepy, but I guess it just kind of overcame me and I fell asleep at the wheel. I see smoke ahead of us and I see an 18 wheeler go off the road and I see another vehicle go off the road and then I see a car spinning and it's on my side. The vehicle was coming towards me, was coming. And so next thing I know, I'm just waking up and I'm spinning and I'm, first thought was, oh man, dad's gonna get mad, you know, cause I wrecked the car. But the second thought was, okay, I just need to get the car to stop spinning. I just remember feeling a bunch of heat coming from my left arm and I look down and I see that it's basically been ripped off. And come up on water, it was, was a gore, gory scene. I mean, Aries' arm was, was off and uh, he was awake. And I could, I, as I was walking up, I could see, you know, you can see his arm was gone from here down. I was like, oh crap. And there were a couple other uh, vehicles who saw the accident and some people who lived nearby. And so really quickly, some people came and they were uh, kind of assessing the situation. And I was like, hey, you know, can we get something for my arm? And I think they were just still in half shock, half assessing. And I'm like, guys, you know, I just need, you know, a shirt. I need something for my arm. I was wearing about what I'm wearing now, t-shirt and shorts. It was September in Arkansas. And my, my hippie side came out, so I decided I was just gonna get what I could get to try to save this kid's life. So there was a young man standing there, and he had a belt on. I said, hey, give me your belt, and he kind of looked at me like I was asking him to take his clothes off, but I literally just wanted his belt. At this point, he looks at me and tells me it hurts. And I said, that's good. And um, I say something in that, in that effect that a lot of people behind me gasp, but I said, that means you're alive. Let it hurt. Stay with me. Um, I've been through this before. People normally, when they pass out, they die. And I remember I was starting to lose consciousness, um, and I knew if I blacked out that it would just be uh, even worse. And he was on that brink. Um, he had the smell coming from his mouth of sweetness, and you know, this just he was starting to go into shock, and you could see it. Um, Eris is a Hispanic male. He was starting to turn gray. And so I just remember getting tunnel vision and just thinking, okay, I need to just stay awake, stay awake. And so since the steering wheel was like right here on me, I started just uh, trying to memorize the details, just trying to look at where I could, just trying to remember what everything's like. And then uh, I guess the math side of me thought, okay, let's just do doubles in my head. So like one and one is two, two and two is four, four and four is eight, eight and on and on. And before I knew it, I, was, I regained full consciousness again and didn't have that tunnel vision anymore. And so from that point on, I just knew, okay, I just need to at least remain this kind of level of consciousness until I at least make it to the hospital. The kids showed a resilience that I can, I've only seen from you know, I've seen from soldiers, because when we go overseas, there's an expectation that this is going to happen. And so we're ready to, for that to happen. You know, when you get hit, you, you, you're just waiting for the moment to happen. And most people can't handle that. But this young man had a resiliency and a, and a fight in him that you could see. My parents asked me, you know, if like the doctors had told me uh, anything that they were going to do. And I had talked to the doctors before. They were saying that they were going to have to amputate my arm which I already knew the arm was ripped off. So to me, I was thinking, well, you know, not really anything is happening. I didn't know this, but they had put my arm back where it would have gone and just wrapped it up as if it looked like it was still there. And my mom said she remembers she could see some fingertips and she said they were black, but to them it looked like I was whole. I mean, this kid could literally have been nothing. He's from Yale County, Arkansas. He could have literally just went through school and said, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna work the plant. He's going to college. He's getting his degree, he's a smart guy, he thinks outside the box. And he was thinking outside the box that this was all going on. 